Hello, this is Star Jenga. Welcome back to another video of Gatchet Impact here. So today we're going to do a character guide, a character guide review for you and Mia. So before we get into this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell side, and your movements aim more like the latest video, like this one. Um, for this guy in, in this channel right now, um, there are seventy two percent of you that watch this my videos and have unsubscribed. So. It only going to take like five seconds. Just go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell sign, and that's all you need to do. Very simple. Anyway, so we're going to be talking about um, you and me are here. So for for you guys that already um, have you and me and know how to use her properly and already expert using her in a team comp, you don't have to watch this video because this video is actually for a player that don't know who you and me is or actually want to learn how to use her. And yeah, this video will actually help the players like kind of like how I'm familiar of using her because like you and me, it's going to come out in two in 3.2. So for a player that want to roll for her, I recommend watching this video before um, actually trying to pull for her. Or you actually do if you do have you and me in a previous roll, then I recommend watching this video if you guys want to actually learn a little more how how in a, in a way of using her. I don't have her. My friend have her. I actually know how to use her. You gotta analyze every single step of each character. And throughout this whole video, even though the character I, I don't have it yet, I actually know how to use it. So anyway, yes, let's get into the video now. So in the part of the video, um, who are you and Mia? So we already know you and Mia is in the Zuma character. She's a five star pyro character, bow using character. And we are in another thing that's about special about her that she works very well in a team comp. She actually can work by herself too, but especially in a team comp though, and I, that's the reason why I won't be going through over this video. I want to roll for her, but I actually have my plan to roll on the uh, Dental Archon that's coming out. So when you ascend her, you will actually increase her critical rate, and you need a gemstone, so basically taking on a pyro type of status is going to be a first start in order to get it. And those the weeds and the uh, books, yeah, you can actually easily get those from killing the, <laughs> the monster around in Azuma. So it shouldn't be that much of a problem. So her active skill here, she can afford up to 5 executive strike with a bow. And her charge attack is going to be something different here. So when you use a charge attack on the first charge attack, charged up so that you will fire a flame and arrow that caused a pyro damage and the second charge you will actually release the arrow and blast and uh, unleash a three kind of arrow that will hit nearby opponent that can deal pyro damage. That's her sexual eye there and her elemental skill here when her elemental skill is activated you will actually summon a blazing arrow that that will all normal attack will be converted into pyro damage and you will not be able to generate any kind of arrow at charge attack number two and, this, and the, the skill will deactivate when her duration runs out or she leaves the field like switching to a different character and her elemental burst here she will leap into the air and fire at Firing an opponent with a, and causing a AOE pyro damage and will mark one of the opponent with Aura Blaze. Aura Blaze, what it does is when all, all normal attack, charge attack, plunge attack, elemental skill, or elemental boost that hit by any other party number than other than you and me and, and hit the opponent, it will mark them with Blaze and Aura and will trigger a disposal that deals with a pyro AOE damage. And this one will what happened to the aura blaze when on the opponent is when the opponent is defeated that and they haven't expired yet, it will pass on to another opponent and it will in inherit a same remain of endurance. So this trigger this aura blade can explode for every two seconds when in there. And the skill will deactivate when the duration runs out or you mirror is down. I mean it, it also means she defeated in battle. So her passive skill number one here, Blazing March. When you and Mia craft anything that decor ornament or landscaping furniture in the teapot, 
she will have 100% chance of refunding a portion of the material that they use. Passes talent number two here, trick of a troublemaker here. During the elemental, elemental burst, elemental skill I actually mean, when you emit a normal attack will increase her power damage by 2% on hit though, and will last for 3 seconds, and it actually can stack up up to 10 times. And her elemental passive skill number 3 here, Summer Night Dawn. When using her elemental burst, nearby party number that will not include you and Mia will gain 10% of increasing the attack for 15 seconds. Additionally, the attack also been, will be added on number of Trick of a Troublemaker stack that you and Mia possessed in the, during the battle after using her elemental skill, her elemental burst I mean. So her elemental boost will increase by 1% bonus or per stack of the trick of the troublemaker that she have in. But also will will actually increase due to like um, on her elemental skill. So when you use her elemental skill, stack up to 10 times, use your elemental boost, then the attack bonus will increase by one per stack. Now, you and me are constellation here. Constellation level 1 here. When using her elemental burst here, her blading, her aura blading will last for extra 4 seconds. And additionally, when an opponent is defeated by an effect of a aura blade in the, during that duration, you and me attack will increase by 20% for 20 seconds. Constellation level 2 here. When you and me pyro damage land a hit at critical hits, then you and Mia will gain 20% of more power damage for 6 seconds. And the effect can be triggered even you and Mia is not active on the field. Constellation level 3 here will increase her you and Mia quick um, elemental skill by 3. Maximum you can increase to 10. And increasing this constellation will increase by 3 more. And instead of maximum upgraded 15 so ignore the part that I stated 15 because when you upgrade it to max it's going maximum of 10 you only when you in unlock this constellation you will increase three more that's a maximum of 13 so don't tell me why it have 15 because I even I don't even know why so constellation level four here when you and me are when, the, when you and Mia own um, Aura Blade to trigger an explosive, then her elemental skill cooldown will decrease by 1.2 seconds. Constellation level 5 here will increase her elemental burst talent by 3. And Constellation level 6 here, when her elemental skill is used, you and Mia normal attack will have a 50% chance of firing a blazing arrow that will deal 60% of original damage. The damage will consider a normal attack damage. And you guys, um, so in this constellation here, I can see um, getting you and me a constellation to constellation level 2, it will be probably enough already. I don't even see how um, constellation level 3, 4, 5, or 6 will actually even make that big of a difference. So, if you guys do want to, I recommend getting Constellation Level 2. If you want to be character, want to be maxed out or anything, then that's up to you. But mm, Constellation Level 2 be probably, assuming I would say that's already more than enough. So, artifacts here. So, there are two ways you can actually, I can see how to build her. So, if you build her in her kind of like more of a solo type team com in the thing, like without even using her elemental boost. Then here's one you can use. This one, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you can't really see the this one angle. Okay, so this angle here, because when you have two pieces, will have increased attack by 18%. When you have four pieces, here, when casting elemental skill, this character will have 15 energy or more. They will lose 15 energy, but will have gained a 50% of more damage on normal charge and punch attack and can last for 10 seconds. And this effect will not trigger again after the duration ends during that time. So yes, this is actually one of the artifacts I recommending you guys to use. But if you guys are using her in the team comp, like using her elemental burst, I will give you guys an example of this one. 
because I do use here Team Com in Gacha Impact, and I think that's recommendable in uh, Gacha Impact, right? So, in Gacha Impact, so kind of like this. I will give you an example of character in use. So kind of like Ching Shao. You use her, use hit elemental burst. Then after that, you use um like who Jean elemental burst. After that, then you Chang Yin or it's like elemental skill. And then you probably going to have you have you and me up there out out there after that after work. I right? say that. So I recommend like kind of like this. So Ching Shao elemental burst. Then after that, you can use you mirror element, elemental burst. Then yeah, you can actually use your, your elemental skill after that because it will cause a pyro and a hydro because the damage on aura blade will affect when along it that the elemental skill element or any elemental will hit the opponent will actually cause the explosive. As long as you and me are not hitting that person, as long as you and me are like. It not belong to it along with the skill not belong to you and me so kind of like that so you still can damage using her but you also be able to damage your cognitive blade effect too so i don't know how it's, i don't know how to explain it better for you guys but that's the best i can explain it only works when i actually show you in order to show you that's all so that's why chrism witch of flame will be a best to use because two people will increase the power of damage and four people will cause a any like overload burning or burning damage it will increase, increase by 40% and big five melt damage will increase by 15 because that's the, the those are the two most powerful elemental reaction in the game so far and when you use the elemental skill will increase the two piece set of bonus by 50% for 10 seconds and maximum stack of three so for you and me though, when you use the elemental skill, you can you will, will you will be attacking an opponent like non-stop for it for 10 seconds, right? So in that 10 seconds, you'll be damaging them and you already gain a maximum three stacks already. That's how high you will go. After the duration end on your elemental skill, you will have eight more seconds to use your elemental skill before that 10 second ends. So you can actually use it again. So you actually can constantly deal in like more damage on them, no matter what. So that's how just how it works. But as long as it's pyro damage on your artifacts that you are using, so you can choose between these two. So this, or I would recommend Queen with the Flame. Then if I do have new mirror, this is this is the build I would actually use, but solely. I will use this then if I'm doing solo. But the, 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 if you guys don't know, I am doing the abyss. Yes, Queen of Bishop Flame will be a best for me to use. Uh, oh, and another thing is for you guys, I actually want to mention because you guys also want to know what that kind of stack you guys want to actually want to use in here. So the flower and the feather, you already know what it is. But getting quick rate, quick damage will be a best for these two. And for a stand of time, I recommend getting a attack bonus. But if you guys do want to do more of an elemental reaction damage, elemental mastery will be a best. But for the cup though, the cup here, I would recommend using a pyro bonus damage. But again though, it does more of a support elemental mastery. And again, for a crown elemental mastery, I would recommend it. But for this one, if you do not have enough crit rate, which I don't think that would be a problem, then increase the crit damage. I recommend it. Crit damage. Even if, if you're using her as a support, I would still recommend crit damage. But you still, still can use elemental map free and basically up to you how you actually want to play her. Because for me, I would play her because for the feather, for a flower and feather, I would recommend having the sub stack at quick rate and quick damage with some elemental mastery in it if it's possible. For standard of time, for me, I would, rec I would have attack percentage. And for sub stack, quick rate, quick damage, elemental mastery if it's possible. For cups, I would actually increase pyro bonus damage with the sub stack, quick rate, quick damage, 
Elmer's Mackery if it's possible. Also, same thing for a crown, but it's a little bit different for a crown. Crown, I will actually increase crit damage, and with the, actually a crit rate with substack and elemental mastery, if possible, with some other unit with some uh, attack bonus, so attack percentage bonus, if possible too. So yes, that's how I would actually build the character that way in order to sustain more damage. Next one, her weapon here. So her main weapon. It's going to be Thundering Pulse And I recommend using any If you have any um, bow or a weapon bow That have crit damage I recommend that would, would, that would work best for you and me If you don't have anything else And this is her main bow here You can actually get in the banner And I'm not going to read it out Because you guys should already know What it does after you read it it's like any other bow, if you guys do not have any other bow, kind of like a messenger bow or anything Then there is another bow you can actually um, get from a blacksmith First bow here I actually seen here, this one is Hamagami, whatever you want to name it So what, what does this do here is like increase the attack and attack percentage This one, increasing normal damage by 16% and charge attack by 12 Equipping this care equipping this uh, weapon on a character character energy will reach 100 where effect will increase by 100 but you, this is actually meaning that you will use her in a team comp using her elemental burst a lot more often and this one is more of a solo type one so this one also the same thing attack and attack bonus when charge attack hit the weak point of the uh, increasing the when the charge attack hit an opponent at the weak point will increase the movement speed by 10 and attack damage by 36% for 10 seconds and this bow actually can craft in a blacksmith oh and you guys are wondering where you can get this bow go to the house that have seashell the only thing you need to do is just collect 3 of them and it should be around there somewhere collect 3 of them, 3 of them, give it to the guy and you will actually have 3 chests you can open, open any chest and you should get a blueprint out of there if you do not get it then uh, try it try next day and I, if you don't get it again, try it next day until you get it, okay? Make sure you check in the blacksmith if you get it or not. So I recommend you should be able to get it in the first try. When, uh, when the, during the time of weapon been released. And it should have been released already a long time ago. If you guys don't have it, I recommend going there. Or else, get, or else if you do not want to use that weapon, then prototype, prototype one will work actually work very well on her too. If you guys do not have any have any other bow weapon that have quick damage. So anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned something about a little bit more about you and Mia and how you are very familiar with her. If you plan a role for her, go ahead and do that. If you don't plan to use it, save it until you want to use it for any other character because they're it's like a next in the phase 2, there will be a reroll character anyway. For me, I plan to use you and Mia, but I'd rather have Kazuha at this point. Kazuha won't come out yet. Not even in the phase 2, I don't know when he's going to come out, but if he is, I will I will be pulling for him. Yep, so if you have any questions, comment below. And you actually, there are any other video you want me to do a live stream on, or you want me to play, or try it out, or do make a video on, let me know too. You can have, I actually would want to do it. I will be live streaming Gashi Impact and I will actually be doing a live stream on um, State of Decay 2 and I will also be live streaming Outworld at night when during my friend is available. Anyway, that's all I have you guys that's all I have to say. And I hope you guys enjoy your Halloween time and night time because well I don't even know when this video is gonna be uploaded. Hopefully the, this video will be uploaded before you and Mia will actually be released. So anyway, I will catch you guys on my next video, man. Peace out, y'all.